You know, diesel engines are pretty intimidating. It's a big hunk of hot iron down there with all those systems and fluids and whirring belts. And then there's that alarm waiting to go off when you least want it to. Even when it's running, you're thinking, there's a hundred things that could be going wrong here. But actually, diesel engines usually run pretty well. We really don't have to worry about them too much as long as we treat them right. John Bardo, he's been working on big engines for tugboats and fish boats and the like for 30 years. And he's been teaching at the wooden boat school for many years, the ins and outs of smaller yacht diesels. After a walkthrough with a seasoned pro like John, you'll know what to keep an eye on. You'll know what to replace. I bet you're going to be surprised at how comfortable you feel getting your diesel up and running smoothly. In this series, we're going to be walking you through a Yanmar engine, which is an extremely reliable engine, and there's lots of them out there. If you don't have a Yanmar engine and you have another brand, all these diesel engines have similar components in similar locations, and once you've been through this series, you'll be able to identify them on your own engine. So, one thing probably you're wondering is how come I got such good clothes on? Well, when you're working around diesel engines, you definitely don't want to wear good clothes because you're going to get quite dirty. But, when the wife tells you what you're going to wear before you go out the door because you're shooting a video, you better listen. Because happy wife, happy life. That's just the way it is. So that's why I got my good clothes on. We want to talk about the engine cooling system, both the raw water system or the salt water system, and the engine coolant system. We're going to start with the raw water system. So we'll go over to the bench where we have all the parts laid out. We're going to start outside the boat where your boat may have an outside, what's called an outside sea strainer. This particular one opens so that you can then when the boat is hauled out, or if you have to have a diver, access the through hull fitting, which may possibly be filled with barnacles or something that, that blocks the passageway of water going into the boat. So this is the seacock, the sea strainer, and this is a, a ball valve, which you can see. It's open now. That's in the closed position. That's open. The handle will be in line with the seacock when it's open. This will be inside the boat. Very important to know where this is and how to shut it off. Next we'll have a fitting that screws into the through hull fitting. And attached to that fitting will be a very high grade marine flexible hose with two clamps at each end. Well, we, we always like to use two clamps on, on the raw water system. Next in line, you'll find in your boat, you may have an inboard sea strainer. This is a perfect example. This is a Groco. And it has a removable cover. So you shut you would shut your seacock off. You would open up the Groco sea strainer. And inside is a little basket that will catch all the debris that would either clog the system somewhere down line or it would cause debris to enter our salt water pump and possibly clog that. So we want to use this device to protect our water pump impeller. If debris gets into the water pump impeller it could break the veins off and cause more destruction. Threads right in very nicely doesn't have to be real tight, just snug. Then you would go back, you would open up your seacock, you check for any leaks because you don't want the bilge to fill because you've got this cross threaded. Also on the sea strainer is a, is a drain plug. This would be for draining the water out of the, out of the plastic bowl here in case you were to be in cold weather climate. Next in line will be our salt water pump, which is engine mounted. It may be gear driven as this one is, or it may be belt driven. You'll see our, the impeller here. Some salt water pumps will have what's called a zinc. Zinc is a sacrificial anode, so that if there's any electrolysis in the system, it'll eat the zinc rather than the salt water pump. And this is a maintenance item that must be checked 
twice a year. Here is the salt water pump mounted on the engine. You can see the impeller. You can see the nice O-ring seal, which we really like, as opposed to a gasket. Because usually when you take the cover off, the gasket will shrink, and then what do you do? Also, this pump is belt driven. This is the inlet port of the pump. Our C-strain would come before this. Water goes through the pump, and comes out this tube, and goes through over to the device that we call the engine heat exchanger, which is in the lower part of this whole housing. The heat exchanger goes right through here. We have engine coolant flowing through the thermostat when it opens into the heat exchanger, and then the coolant flows back into the engine block and it continues its circular rotation. But what's happening inside this box? Inside this box we have what's called the heat exchanger core. And the heat exchanger core is, is either a plate bundle or a tube bundle. In this particular case we have the engine coolant flowing through the tubes and we have the raw water flowing around the tubes so that the two fluids can transfer heat from one to the other. And then the engine coolant goes back into the engine, the raw water flows out of the end of the heat exchanger. And here is an example of a heat exchanger core that's removed from the actual housing. Here you can see the plates that I've described. In this case there's six plates. These plates would be surrounded by engine coolant. The other fluid will enter a port here and exit here and flow through the plates thereby transferring the heat from one fluid to the other fluid. Also you may find a zinc in your heat exchanger. Some engines have them, some engines don't. But this is an example, this is called a pencil zinc with a, with a bronze plug, brass plug. So the raw water or salt water will pass through here and exit through this tube and then will go to the exhaust elbow. And the exhaust elbow is where the raw water is introduced into the hot exhaust gas stream. So when it exits this elbow, which we call 180 degree elbow, the exhaust gases will be cool and they will not melt a marine exhaust hose that goes to a muffler. So now we'll go back over to the table. And we have another example of a marine exhaust elbow, this end being the inlet where the engine is, this end being where the marine exhaust hose attaches with two clamps and we like to see this style of clamp which is called a stainless steel T-bolt clamp and we like to see two on there just to be safe. The salt water enters here on top goes inside and is, and is mixed with the exhaust gases on the downslope. We go from here to a muffler. And the muffler is, is again plastic and would melt if there wasn't any water in it. So this fills up with water and the exhaust goes through the water and exits at this port right here. Also, for winter layup, this muffler has a drain plug that you can take off and drain the water out. Keep it from freezing and busting. So when you launch your boat next time in the spring the bilge won't flood. From this port the exhaust runs out the outlet here through a marine exhaust hose which may very well if this muffler is below the water line may very well go in a, in a U-shape up over the water line and back down again and in that the highest point will be an anti-siphon valve so that the boat can't flood should the stern go below the exhaust pipe. So now we come to and we don't have a we don't have an example but we come to an exhaust through hull fitting which will be fitted into the boat there's no there's no valve it's just a through hull fitting so the rubber hose will hook on to the, the inside of that and on the outside we'll have a flapper valve and the flapper valve will prevent any wave action any water from entering the system going the wrong way which could 
in some instances flood the engine, which is not a good scenario that we want to have.